Welcome to the vlog and welcome to Moonbill, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. We're just 13 miles from Indonesian border, heading back to Wewak. So let's go get started. Headers on, fuel pump on, fuel on. And low start. Come on, doggy, hurry up. All right, over 14 percent. Introduce my fuel. Right, IDT's coming up. Nice rate. Check it for hot starts, hung starts. Hot starts is basically as it's continuing on with the yellow and the red, but it didn't. Right, generator on, top forward. Our V2 on, which is a way that our home base can track us. Alternator on in the aux bus. All right, let's get our air going. It's stinking hot here. All right, fuel caps and selectors. Let's go to the top, just so I'm not on this side slope here. All stations, Moonbill 126.7, November, Tango, Kilo. Taxi, Moonbill, for or correction, WeWAC will be on climb 17,000. All stations, Moonbill. Well, it's a really, really nice day out for a flight back to WeWAC kind of a long flight, so I thought I'd take the flight and just share with you why I'm a bush pilot here in Papua New Guinea. So yeah, when we get airborne, we'll start talking a little bit about that. All right, fuel caps and selectors are good. Controls are good. Turn off our train awareness system, switches and instruments. I'm empty today. So I'll be rotating at 53 knots and 62 knots if I had to come back in. Thanks, 6598, November Tango Kilo Taxi. November Tango Kilo Taxi Moonbill, WeWAC, one POV. All right, flaps are good. Trim and aboard. Let's get our trim starting to move where we want it to be. I do full right rudder trim for takeoff. Uh, I'm gonna have 35 knots by those yellow cones on the left, the first yellow cones. If I'm not by that 35, I'm empty, I should be. Full reverse, heavy braking, cut off, pull off, and shut up if we're going off. We're just gonna continue straight ahead all the way off if we need to. After takeoff, I'm gonna pitch for 85 knots, consider EPL. Come on, dog, get out of the way. He's small enough, even if he walked under my prop, it'd still be okay. Come on, people. Come off the runway. There we go. Anyways, let's start back over. After takeoff, pitch for 85, consider EPL, consider feather. Otherwise, 80 full flaps, cut off, pull off, and shut off. Emergencies, crack my door, master's off. All right, ignition. Lights, harnesses, 32 degrees out at 3,000. 1420, 14, correction, 1370 for 1420. And the reason why there's a difference is because we're in bypass and you do it 50 under if you're in bypass, that's why. All right, harnesses, idle, and governor check. We've already done our taxi call, so 1370 rotate at 53. Condition flaps 20, one harnesses, and no dog. Right, I'm just going to lock my elbow in so I'm not just bouncing all over the place. All right, there we go. All right, airspeed's alive. There's 35. Bounce my way down. Oh, there we go. See what I mean? All right, nose over, get my speed up. And we'll climb out at 73 knots at 740 on the ITT. There's 73. Oh, climbing out. It was climbing out at 2,200 feet, I think. Now it's getting back down to around 1100 or so. Anyways, I am completely empty, which definitely helps a lot. Let's go ahead and make our turn out, clear the hill. 
And then once we're over this hill, we'll just nose back over, get our airspeed back up over 85, and then we'll start taking our flaps out. There's 85, 20 degrees of flaps. Over 90, we'll go zero degrees. And let's bring our prop back to 2,000 RPM. And our ITT for climb out is 720. We'll climb at 100 knots, that way I can throw the autopilot on. If it's below 100 knots, you can't use the autopilot. So I'm just going to climb out right at 100 knots so I can use that. Gonna get around this next hill right here and then we'll get on course for WeWAC. We've got like 8,000 foot mountain right there. I'm only at 4,600. So there's lots of clouds always. We'll go around that and then we'll be on our way. All right, landing light off, bypass and ignition turned off. Thanks, 65, 9 or 8, November Tango, Kilo departure. November Tango, Kilo departed, moon bill time 1-0. We'll be tracking 059, or correction, 057 on climb 17,000. Estimating overhead, how now, 3-9er. I'll see some moon bill 126, decimal 7, Kodiak November Tango, Kilo departed, moon bill or we were passing 6,400 on climb at 1, 7,000. All right, now that we're just about clear of these little hills right here, we can almost get on course now. Just an hour and eight minutes back to WeWAC from out here. If you guys fly Sims, uh, this is a really fun place to come into. I think it's already on X-Plane 11 and I'm Pretty sure it'd probably be on a flight simulator 2020 as well, but it is on X plane just standard. But I think the identifier is incorrect for it. So I've had a lot of comments down below, a lot of questions why I'm doing this job here in Papua New Guinea, why am I not with the airlines, if am I ever going to go to the airlines, and how I got my job here as a bush pilot. So I thought I'd cover some of that today. I haven't yet just because I want to keep this a strictly flying channel and I don't really want to go into my personal details that much. So I fly with a mission organization called Ethnos 360 Aviation and our main focus for being here in Papua New Guinea is tribal church planning. So you might agree with that, you might disagree with that. To be honest, I really don't care. But that's why I'm here. I want to be a part of tribal church planning and I didn't really feel like my gifts and abilities were in speaking and preaching and things like that. So I actually went into aviation, actually went into aviation when I was 19, got my pilot's license in Michigan at a community college. And after like a year and a half, I was like, yeah, this is so boring. Like, I don't think I could just stay here and drone along and did, without any purpose, it was really boring. And I definitely could not do airlines because I wanted to have, I wanted to do something that I felt had purpose in life. And I really do get a sense of purpose here. I really enjoy the fact that I get to fly for people. I get to be feeling like I'm helping people every day. So I really do enjoy that aspect. But more importantly, I wanted to be a part of tribal church planning and Ethnos 360 Aviation. Their main focus is to assist the tribal church planters. So that what I mean by tribal church planters is missionaries have gone into these tribes to not only present the gospel to them, but to translate they teach them how to read. They actually come up with an alphabet for these because these are, in PNG, there's like 800 plus languages. And they actually break their language down, develop a alphabet for them, and actually teach them to read their own tribal language. So they're doing more than just presenting the gospel to them. So that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. I really don't have much of a desire to go fly for the airlines. I think I would enjoy it for a little bit, but I don't think I would have the sense of purpose behind it as much as this. So that's why I really enjoy what I do here. And to be honest, this isn't like any other flying in the world, except maybe Indonesia or Philippines or something like that. But anyways, um, I really enjoy what I do. And also the other question I get a lot is, how did I get my job as a bush pilot here? So because I fly with this mission organization, it's probably a lot different than a lot of other companies. I don't know specifically what a lot of the other companies require. I would guess they would require at least a thousand hours 
of turtle time, probably some dirt turbine time because they don't fly piston engines here in this country anymore. We used to have some operators that flew Cessna 206s, but nobody flies those anymore. All right, that chime just let me know it's four degrees Celsius outside, so flip out my pedo heats. Even though it's perfectly clear out, I still get in the habit of it. Just also so I don't have this big yellow flashing thing the whole way home. Anyways, like I was saying, I fly for Ethnos 360 Aviation. And I got my job with them because I was going into missions originally. So I went through all of their missionary training and then went through their missionary aviation training, which was another nine months out in Arizona. I'll leave a link down below to their website. If you are interested in mission aviation, you can go check it out to find out what exactly we do if you wanted more information. But yeah, we went out to, avi out to Arizona. We did basically bush training on some really, really short runways in a Cessna 206. I think the shortest one was like 900 feet long or something like that. It was fun. It was really fun. All right, it's getting chilly in here. I'm just passing 15,000 feet. So the reason why I'm heading back at 17,000 feet rather than just like, let's say 11,000 feet is because it will save me 40 pounds of fuel, which isn't really tons, but over the year it does add up. But really the main thing was is I had passengers going out to Moonville and that gave me an extra 40 pounds that I could put on in WEWAC to go out that way just to be able to get them the most amount of weight possible. All right, I need to go ahead and text the guy in WEWAC to let him know that what time my ETA is in WEWAC. I'm almost at 17,000 feet, so once I level off, the GPS will spit out what time I'm expected to get there. All right, there we are at 17,000. My speed's gonna probably speed up just a couple of knots, not really that much, maybe 119 at most, I'm thinking. That's what it usually does. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and bring my fork and my ITD, ITT down. So bring my ITT down to 700 and that's where we'll let it sit cruising back to WEWAC. Okay, we're just 50 miles to run WEWAC, about 18 more minutes to go. I'll show you how I'm going to set up my descent profile. Our flight plan button, come down here. I've already put in 1,000 feet because I want to be 1,000 feet over top of the field. And I'm actually going to put it in vertical track. 1,000 feet so I can just stay my altitude for as long as possible. It's just about top of descent right now. That's what that little TOD is. And then it also puts a little top of descent right on the main map page as well. But as you can see from this camera here, I've got a filter on it finally to where it's starting to get the prop blur out of it. It's a 32, a neutral density 32. That's the biggest one they make or the darkest one they make. Anyways, someone on Instagram bought that for me. I, I remember you, I have to go look up your name again, but thank you so much for getting that. I really do appreciate it. Now that I have that, I really want to get one for this camera up here as well as the side camera. So I'm going to order those as well, just so I can get rid of that and just blur the props. You don't have to see it anymore. I hate it as much as you do. Vertical I just, track too lazy to buy them because it's such a pain to get anything here. Anyways, that was Betty letting us know it's top of descent. So I turn my altitude select here all the way down to a thousand feet, hit my vertical speed and flip that down to about 800 feet initially. And it'll zoom past 800 right up to a thousand and then I do two more clicks up to a thousand. And also as I'm pitching over now, my speed's going to increase. So my um, coordination is going to be out, so I'm going to take out a little bit of that right rudder trim or put in left rudder trim, however you want to think of it. And then the little blue cyan arc on the screen is going to let me know where I'm going to actually get to my altitude. What my plan is is to get into WEWAC is to basically get to a thousand feet, fly overhead, the winds are coming from the east, kind of the southeast today. So I will just do a left-hand pattern, left downwind, and land on runway one zero. 
Alright, let's turn off my pedo heats. Yes, it is still below 5 degrees, but I don't really care. Because we're going down into hot, seeping weather. Alright, also I take off my oxygen. Below 14,000 now. If you're wondering, well, how much does the oxygen cost? Is it really the cost savings as far as, like, if you were to go up high as opposed to not use oxygen and whatnot? We figured out it's, like, $3 per pilot per hour. So if we had two in here, it would obviously use, like, 6 bucks. So, yes, it is a lot cheaper using oxygen and flying low. All stations, we whack Kodiak November Tango Kilo, 28 miles to the west, southwest on the 240 radial passing 1 2000. Estimating we whack time 1 4. All right, let's take our autopilot off of our just GPS, GPSS mode, hit the heading button, the bug, hit the heading button, and then I can wiggle my way around these clouds. Should be able to find a nice little road to go through them just fine. For some reason, I did have to punch through them. I couldn't find a hole. I'd have to be at least 3,100 feet. That's my minimum safe altitude. And yes, we do. Every single one of my flights is actually an IFR flight plan. That's all. I say this because it's a little bit different. In the United States, you get clearances and whatnot. Here, you file it, but you don't get clearances unless you were to go to like Fort Moresby or Natsab Airport. So what that allows me to do is punch through clouds and go VFR, IFR, VFR, back and forth. That's really the only thing it allows me to do. But 90% of the time, you can wiggle your way through clouds just fine. Wiggling through clouds is by far the most fun thing to do. I would say it's as much fun as landing on some of these bush runways, for sure. All right, I'm not seeing any holes right here. There's a bunch over there, but that's not really in the right direction, and I'm too lazy to go over there. So if we do need to have to go through this, I'm well over my minimum safe. I don't see any holes right here. Anyways, so we'll just punch right through it, because it's only about like a few hundred, a few hundred feet wide. Slow on down just in case if you hit some bumps. There it is. Back, back up. All station we whack, Kodiak November Tango Kilo, 900 miles to the west north, correction southwest, 5,600 on descent. Circuit time 15 we whack. We'll be flying overhead for a left downwind. One way, one zero. One way. Runway. All right, throw our landing light on. Everything is off. Selectors and brakes are good. Our pauses, we'll just leave it enabled. Our VREF, we're empty today. So if I wanted to come in, the slowest I could come in is like 61 knots. But like I said, I'm thinking there's going to be some wind shear. So I'm probably just going to come in at 70 knots because it's long and it doesn't matter to land really, really short. But I'm just going to put this in at 61 knots, or correction, 60 knots, because it's kind of right on the border. Anyways, there's all the bumps. We'll do our inlet in a minute. If we do need to go around for any reason, it's power up 20 degrees of flaps for 73 knots, which is our VX, which is the best angle of climb, and then reset our power up to 740. So the reason why I don't say set my power up to 740 is because you can over torque or over temp this engine really quick and easy by just pushing it. You can't ever firewall it. It doesn't have the auto throttle and all that cool stuff. Um, so basically you just power up and you watch your white needle come close to the top of the green arc, which is 740 on the ITT, not the torque, but the ITT. And you go 20 degrees of flaps, you pitch up, you start your turn, whatever way you're going to do it, and then you look back at your ITT, and then you reset it to get 740, which is just your max. All right, let's call for our search and rescue. Thanks, 6598, November, Tango, Kilo. In the circuit, we whack, cancel, SAR. November, Tango, Kilo. 
All stations on WEWAC, November Tango Kilo will be flying overhead to join a left downwind runway 10 WEWAC. All right, let's just bring our torque all the way down to probably, because we're empty, probably in the 200s to low 300s. Prop board, 138 knots, 10 degrees of flaps. And it feels like a break too. Or this is my seatbelt lock. A lot of people ask what this thing is, I keep flipping. It's my seatbelt lock to make it so it doesn't go forward. All right, lights and inlet, we've already talked about that. Prop and harness did that, flaps. Under 120, let's go 20 degrees of flaps because I'm 1,600 feet instead of 1,000 feet over the field. We'll go 90 knots on downwind, 80 knots on base, and 70 knots on final. And it looks beautiful out here, doesn't it? Look how clear that water is. Amazing. The coral is probably not that great right here, but go over two more bays over. It's Wan Beach. The coral over there looks like something came straight out of National Geographic. It's incredible. There's a lot of history, like war history, at the Wan area over there. All right, turning base. 80 knots. Five hundred. With full flaps, checklist is complete. <clears throat> Thirteen knots will be on the nose here shortly. And we'll just shoot for around the 500 foot marker so I don't have to use my brakes really for the taxiway. So I get down low on these trees, then I'll probably start getting some more bumps from the wind shear potentially. Crosswind. All right. Boys, this is WeWack, guys. All those bomb creatures are just on the other side of that fence over there. And like I said, whenever I get my 360 camera, And I'll be able to show you those a little bit better because I can aim them down and whatnot. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that flight. Thank you so much for coming along and watching the video. If you did like it, give this video a thumbs up. It sure does help my channel grow. And leave a comment down below on what you thought of it. Be sure to subscribe. I put out videos twice a week, so if this is the kind of videos you guys like watching, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell just so you're not missing out on any of my videos. But Wednesdays and Saturdays is when I post them. So just put it in high idle and super low beta so that my fuel guy can hear that I landed so that he'll actually come fuel me. Otherwise, if he doesn't hear you pull up, then he doesn't come. All right, hopefully that was enough for him. Anyways, from here, I'm heading down to Medang, another hour and 10 minute flight or so, then picking up a bunch of meat for our store in Garoka. Then on to Garoka, so I'm gonna see if I can actually film that flight potentially as well, we'll see. All right, shutting down, let's get our ending fuel. Ending hobs. Turn off my blower, all my lights, ox bus generator, alternator. Cut off, below 38%, we'll do feather. I'm just watching my ITT drop all the way below 200, and then my NG right here, up below like eight to 5% before I flip off my ox fuel pump. Anyways, thanks again guys, have a good one.